What do you say to the choir? Amen. What do you say to the choir? Amen. That God is good all and all the time. And some of you are not responding. I understand it is very cold. So we need to warm you up. I want to prepare the church that I'm about to greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. God is good. And all the time. Uh, thank you so much. The Lord is good indeed all the time. Thank you so much, the choir, for the wonderful, wonderful song. You've made my work here very easy. I also want to appreciate the choirs that have sung ahead of me, and that is the Sidia Shaddai, uh, Akali Sisters, the Riaga Sisters, for the wonderful singing. The choristers, you've sung very well. May the Lord bless you. Allow me quickly uh, to recognize the presence of the pastors in our midst, and that includes the host pastors. All the pastors in our midst, please rise up. All the pastors, I'm seeing my pastors seated, and I'm wondering, all the pastors in our midst, I want, allow me in a special way to recognize the presence of my friend, uh, uh, the failed president, Lake Victoria Field, my friend, Pastor Samson Okwach, on behalf of all the pastors, please wave to the congregation. Uh, thank you so much. You may be seated. Senior pastor, this is your church. You can wave to us now. Uh, thank you so much. God bless you. I want to preach for one hour. And it is good to prepare you so that you don't, because I need to enjoy myself here. And it is good when I relax. So I don't need to be in a hurry. It is God's time. Are we together? I believe you've seen the sermon title, but before we get into that, allow me to appreciate the leadership of this church for extending graciously the invitation to have me stand here today, the pastoral team. May the Lord bless you and keep you, the welfare team. Thank you so much for graciously allowing me to stand today on your Sabbath. May the Lord bless you and keep you. I believe you've seen the sermon title, and the sermon title simply says, The Champion in You. The Champion in You. Now, turn to your neighbor. Turn to your neighbor. It is cold. Some are looking at me. Turn to your neighbor. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. there is a champion in you. I wake him up. Or oh, some of you are giving trial. Don't look at me. Look to your neighbor straight into the eye and say, neighbor, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. oh neighbor, there is a champion in you. I wake him up. This waking up is not very powerful. You are sleeping, what is heavy? Eh? Never. Oh, well, this side. Never. Good now. This side. Never. Good now. The whole church now. Never. Oh, never. There's a champion in you. I wake him up. And that is a thought that I want to draw from the book of Judges, chapter 5. Judges, chapter 5. Judges, chapter 5, verses 6 to 9 is my focus uh, today. The song of Deborah and Barak. But I want to pick a character that I want to talk about in this context. Let us pray. Gracious Father Divine, you've been faithful to me. We've been labored together in this ministry since the time you called me into it. I pray, Jesus, one more time, that Lord, you may be able to manifest your power and strength. Use this weak vessel. I'm praying, Jesus, that this sermon will be able to instruct the mind, impart the mind, instruct the arts, and, believe, and inspire behaviors towards godliness. This sermon, Jesus, one more time, may it disturb the comfortable 
and may it comfort those who are troubled, I plead in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says in Judges chapter 5, verses 6, it says, In the days of Shamgar, son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were deserted, and the travelers walked along the byways. Verses 7, if you are with me, say amen. amen. Village life ceased, it ceased in Israel, until I, Deborah, arose, arose a mother in, his, in Israel. Verses 8, they chose, they chose new gods. Then there was war in the gates. Not a shield or a spear was seen among 40,000 in Israel. My heart is with the rulers of Israel who offered themselves willingly with the people of the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hey, bless the Lord. Many scholars believe that uh, Judges chapter 3, verses 31, when you do textual criticism, you realize that it's supposed to be here connected with verses 6 of Judges chapter 5. So let us read quickly 331. 331. 331 says, After him was Shamga, the son of Anath, who killed 600 men of the Philistines with an ox god. And he also delivered Israel and therefore became a champion in the land, reading from Hebrews Classicals. The champion in you. The champion in you. And I want to begin by saying that uh, there's a God in heaven who is an expert in turning losers to champions. I don't have a church here. You are making this someone very heavy. Yet it's very simple. There's a God in heaven who is an expert in turning losers into champions. There's a God in heaven who is an expert in turning weak things to become mighty in power. Mm. Now I'm beginning to enjoy myself here. <laughs> There's a God in heaven who is powerful in turning weak things to become mighty. This God is powerful to change destinies. In him the lost is found. In him the sick is healed. In him the broken relationships are mended. The champion <laughs> in you. There's a God in heaven who is powerful that when, when things are not making sense in your life, you can call to this God and he can make things right. This God is powerful. I don't know how you, you've woken up this morning. Some of you are troubled. Some of you are shaken. Some of you are worried about tomorrow. This God is powerful, turning weak things to become mighty in power, turning losers into champions. And I want to speak to someone here. I want to speak to a young lady who is nursing pain this morning. A young lady who has been left with a child. The father of the child has ran away. You are worried about the future of the child. There's a God in heaven who will take care of the child. I want to talk to a single mother who is here. The father of your children ran away, left you with the children. Some fathered children and then ran away. Those children, the future of those children, God is raising kings and queens from those children. There's a God in heaven who is an expert in turning losers into champions. This God is powerful to the extent that those who are considered insignificant, God is able to make them champions. Those who are considered overlooked, those who are considered valueless, those who are considered outsiders in this God, God is able to qualify them. Do I have a church here? Let me look at this side. This side is sleeping. There's a God in heaven who is so powerful to make wrong things right. Good church now. This God is powerful that when you cry to him, even in the mary clay, he's able to pick you up into the top of the mountain. 
Even when you are in the valley of sin, Christ is more powerful to pick you up, wash you clean, and set you on a higher mountain. Lift me higher to the mountain that is higher than I. Jesus Christ. This God is powerful in turning your situations around. In him, the forgotten grounds become fertile grounds. Hmm. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm enjoying myself here. The book of Judges is powerful and there are three things in the book of Judges that when you study this book you need to understand. The book of Judges first the Bible, the many scholars believe that the book of Judges and the book of Ruth were formally tied together. But they were later separated. But that is not for you. There are three things when you study the book of Judges you will see. Number one, you will see a God who is faithful. You know, you didn't get it. So let me go back to the background. The book of Judges is the most bloody book in the Bible. And when you study this book, you can ask, why is God in this story? Why is God in this book? But when you study this book, you see a God who is faithful even when we are faithless. This book does not present Eud, the assassin, as a man worthy of humiliation. This book does not present Samson, a sex maniac, crazy man, a man who is not faithful to God as someone worthy of humiliation. This book does not actually present Jephthah, represent Jephthah as a man worthy of humiliation. Because Jephthah, though is powerful, but does not have a connection with the God of Israel. I mean the Bible. Relax. And the Bible says that this man does not have a connection with the God to the extent that he feels that when he can offer his daughter as a sacrifice, he can please the God of Israel. God is not like that. Are we together? You don't need to fast till your hips become like a stick to please him. Is this thing working? You don't need to fast till you die to please the God of Israel. You only need to give your heart and he'll be able to make you a champion. The second thing that you need to see when you study this book is that this book tells us about the records of human failures. Hey! Right from chapter 1, you realize that a generation of mighty men had died. And a new generation came in that did not know the God of Israel. Study your book. A generation of Joshua died. And the contemporaries also died. And that generation that had a connection with the God of Israel also died. And the Bible says a new generation came to the land that did not have a connection with the God of Israel. A generation of worthy men, worthless men, a generation of licentious profligates, a generation of men that did not have a connection with the one who was powerful, a generation of lazy, do-nothing men. And so you wonder what happened that men who are actually delivered from the land of Egypt all of a sudden, were worshipping Baal and Ashtoreth, the god of the moon. Why were these people worshipping Chemos, the god of Ammon? Why were they worshipping Milcom, the god of Moab? These people lost touch with the god. This book presents a generation of failed men. Failed men. They forgot the god of Israel. But there's something that I love in this book which troubles me. Then God was looking for a champion in the land. Are you with me? If you're with me, say amen. amen. God was looking for a champion in the land. There were no men in the land. The Bible says that everyone did which was pleasing in their own eyes. They forgot the God who was able to make things right. 
God was looking for a man in the city, a man who could actually deliver them. God was faithful that for seven times they cried to God and he was able to lift them up. Seven times. So God looking upon the children of men, there was no champion in the land. And so what he did, he decided to use these judges anyway. No, that one is not troubling you. God can lift a pagan and help him to sit in the church board. Is this thing working? God can make you an elder even when your heart is not right with him. This is too heavy for you. There's a God in heaven who can raise someone before you are converted. God can make you an elder because he also desires that he can save you when you are an elder. Some of us are on the pulpit by grace. Hey, Hallelujah. God can make you a church leader. Not because you have a connection with him, because he desires to save you also. Because the judgment is coming. When everyone will stand before the judgment seat of Christ to answer for the sins committed in the boot. God can raise Adarius, Cyrus, and Gamaliel, pagan men, and make them lead his people. Which kind of a God is this? Because sometimes we are so quick to throw stones at those who are struggling, but God does not work like that. Hallelujah. God does not work like that. I present to us a man among judges. A man, Shamga by name. Shamga is unknown in the Israel. Shamga is unnamed, is given a name of a stranger. Many scholars believe that Shamga, his name only appears twice in the Bible. That his father was from the Naphtali and his mother was from the tribe of the Canaanites. So he was born as a, a result of intermarriage. Scholars believe that after his birth, the father ran away and left them. Shamga. Shamga was a farmer. Shamga was committed. Shamga was a nobody in the history of Israelites. But there's a God in heaven who can turn nobodies into somebodies. Hallelujah. If you are with me, say amen. amen. God can turn a nobody into what? Somebody. God can make the insignificant become important. God can change your situation. God is powerful. And the Bible says the Philistines could come. And when they come, they take away everything from the Israelites. They burn their crops, capture them as slaves. And they will run away. The Bible says the byways were deserted. I'm in the Bible now. Are you with me now? The byways were deserted. And men were afraid to go out. But Shamga mm, was in the play field, was in the field plowing. Shamga. Hey. So, this is the only technical aspect of this. I'm relax. So the moment the enemies could come, Everyone will run away. But one day, Shamga prays and he says, God, mm, make me a champion. <laughs> Are you with me? Make me what? A champion. So, five things. How to become a champion. Then I'll be done with this. Someone. Five things. Oh, now... <laughs> To become what? You want to be a champion? Five things we can deduce from the life of some Shemga on how to become a champion. The Bible is filled with men who are nobodies, but God was able to make them somebodies. Think of the widow of Seraphath. She was a nobody. God made her somebody. Think of the young boy in John who offered his lunch to Christ in order to feed the multitude made somebody. Think of the mighty men of David. When they came to him, they were nobodies, but God was able to transform them 
Let us praise God who is an expert in making champions. Mm. So has your husband forgotten your name? Pray to the one who can make you a champion. <laughs> has your church members forgotten you? That every election your name never appears anywhere. And you see the same people all the time. God wants to save them and to save you also. And to make you a champion. Hey, hallelujah. Number one. Number one. Champions were partners with God. Mm. Hallelujah. Champions in the Bible were partners with God. The connection between them and God was so powerful. Powerful is the preacher who is connected to the source of power. Hey, this man became a champion because when you read the Bible, the Bible says that each and every time the Spirit of God will come upon them. I mean, the Bible, I don't have much time. In Othniel, Judges 3:10, the Spirit of God came down upon him. And when you do the book of Gideon, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord came down upon Gideon. And you see, when you read that, you can realize that. Gideon goes to the camp of the enemy and he hears the one telling the dream. And he says that that is the sword of Gideon. But then Gideon, when he's going to the war, he says that. Watch what I do. When I jump, do what? No, let me try this one. When I jump, do what? When I sing, do what? And when you blow the trumpet, blow the trumpet. When you sing, do it right now. Because I and God, we are connected. So what he says, he says now when you sing, say the sword of the Lord and the sword of Gideon. I mean the Bible. Because champions were connected with God. The partnership between a champion and God is so intact. This partnership is more than the size of your house. Hey, is this thing working? Champions, the partnership is so powerful than the success of your business. It is powerful than your education. When you are connected to God, you are powerful. Partner the one who is able to raise back your Lazarus from the dead. Partner the one who is able to make your way in the river Jordan. Partner the one who is able to shut the mouths of the lion. But not the one who is able to make the sun and the moon to stand still. Amen. Champions were partners with God. Hey. So if you want to become a champion, have a relationship with who? This partnership is more than tyranny of numbers. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This partnership is more than tribal affiliation. This partnership is more than the friends that you have. Partner, the one who can make weak man become champion. So Shamga prayed and said, Lord, make me a what? And God was able to make him. So, are you considered weak? Even your husband has forgotten your name. Are you considered weak? That even people don't value you? In the office where you work, they don't respect you anymore. You are just adding numbers. You don't belong. That's what they are saying, my friend. Look upon Christ. Mm, my friend, he will make you a champion when you connect yourself with him. Champions are powerful. Champions. That when you pray, you see victory. Champions. When you pray, you see victory. When you have lost your job, you see another way open. Amen. When you don't have a husband, you see the face of your husband before you meet him. Amen. Hey, champions. Number two. <laughs> number two. So what is number one? Champions who are partners with you. Number two. Champions, they start where they are. Shamga was busy in the field plowing when the rats were sleeping. 
I mean the text we read together. The byways were deserted. Villagers, village, village life ceased, verse 7. When people were afraid to go out, Shamga was in the field plowing. God does not call lazy people. God call optimistic and working people. So why are you not responding now? Let me repeat what I've said. If you want God to bless you, start where you are. Be busy where you are. If you don't have a job, wake up. Put on your suit and go out. Is this thing working? Don't sleep till it is very late. No. Leave your bed and go and you'll find a job. That is it. If you are looking for a husband, be busy where you are. How do you become busy praying for the husband? But also go out looking beautiful. Are we together? Go out looking nice. Start where you are. Become busy where you are. Shamga was busy. Busy. And the Bible said, I need a champion. This man who is busy, let him become what? Be busy where you are. Champions were busy men. God is powerful. God is mighty. The spirit of God is everything. When you connect yourself with him, you are a powerful man and, uh, and a woman of God. Connect yourself with God. Be busy where you are. God does not call lazy people. God calls busy people. Okay, you didn't understand it. So let me say it differently. God promotes busy people. Some people in their places of work, they arrive late all the time. And then they want to be promoted. My friend, we are going to sit all there for another seven years. Keep time. Eh? Some people even in the choir practice, you see them. They come late every time. My friend, be busy. Are we together? If you want to become a pastor, become busy. Don't copy anyone. Preach the way God called you. And you see, meet pastors who are trying to mimic other preachers. You don't need to mimic anyone. Just connect yourself with Jesus Christ and will make you a champion of faith. Be busy where you are. God did not call. You see, when God called Moses, he was in the wilderness doing something. See, I'm in the Bible. He was attending to the flock. When God called David, David was busy attending the flock. When Jesus Christ called the 12 disciples, all of them were busy. Be busy. Hallelujah. Number three. Number three. Use what you have. Shamga was not trained in military. <laughs> but he had an ox god. Ox god is just some weak kind of instrumentalities. Just weak. Used for plowing and guarding the oxen. But when the enemy came, he says, I don't have a gun. I don't have anything. I'm using what I have. You are not getting it. So when the enemy was coming, Shamga stood his ground and he said, I'm using this, I'm trusting the hand of God to magnify this tool to work. My friend, use what you have. If you don't have a suit and you are approaching a lady, go the way you are. Don't borrow a suit. Are we together? They are not with me. Some people, when they are approaching a lady, now they want to hire a car. So you go to one of the elders here with a serious car. And then you say, Elder, I want to approach Jerry. Please. I want to confuse her to the extent that when I just start, at a gear box, my friend, go the way you are. When I was going to, to pay diary, I just told my wife, I don't have money. Tell them. 
that the person who is coming is aspiring to be a pastor. He doesn't have money. That's what I said. And we went. And because I was genuine. My friend, be genuine. Are we together? Don't be fake. The challenge that we have, people love us when we are camouflaging as something else. You see, I tried this thing when I was okay, a caretaker at the Carriage Central. I learned my lesson. There was a lady I loved so much, and uh, the lady was from a well off kind of family, and uh, I was a caretaker cleaning, cleaning the church compound. But the lady was my friend, and I gave her a good name, Chipsy. And she called me Sam. And that's a beautiful name, right? Sam. So when I was cleaning the compound, she will come. We are doing the cleaning together. We became very close friends. So I decided one day to visit their home. As I was. Use what you have. <laughs> I went all the way. The way I was. I didn't have the best suit, but uh, I was going. I decided to go anyway. I didn't have much money. I decided to go. I went all the way. I will not mention. I went all the way. I didn't even go with an elder. I just went. I wanted to know how they will treat me. So when I went, the way I, 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 I was, food was prepared and everything was ready. And then I started eating. They gave me what food and I was eating and I knew these people have accepted me. I went the way I was. So after filling my stomach with food, they asked me three wonderful questions. Young man, what is your name? Who are you? The third one, I said, no. Nah. My name is Sam. I'm a friend of your sister. I call her Chipsy. And I'm here to see your home and see if maybe in the future we can. <laughs> they said, your name is Sam. Yes, but who are you? And I said, sorry, I forgot. I'm a caretaker at Carriage Central, SDA Church. And I've come the way I am to see the home. My friend, don't see me the way you are seeing me. I am a champion in the making. <laughs> are we together? Those people, they say, oh, it's okay, we have had, and you are a friend of so and so, and you want us, you want, to, you are a friend, and you are aspiring to marry her in the future. It's okay, we have seen you. Please let us escort you. <laughs> As they were escorting me, they decided to descend on me with serious beatings. You see, you can't beat a man like me. Are we together? That is a mistake. That is a mistake. And I, the, the kind of beating I was receiving till my body got used to it and I said, if they are killing me, let them kill me. So when I woke up, I said, it's fine. The world will know. <laughs> There's a God in heaven, who is an expert in turning champions. Amen. This God in a, is an expert in turning losers to winners. Amen. God is a champion in turning nobodies into somebodies. Let us give grace and thank God for who, for who he is. Eh. So, but you see, when they are beating me, I was looking at the great champion. The greatest champion because I decided now if they are killing me, I was now re li listening to the voices of the Jews saying, Crucify him! <laughs> Crucify him! <laughs> Crucify him! Crucify him! That was the ultimate champion. And as they were beating him, as they were beating me, I was looking at the one who died and rose again. And I said, God, make me one day a champion. Hallelujah. My friend, you may be a nobody in the eyes of men. 
that there's a God who is an expert in making champions. Don't give up in this life. Even if you are single, don't worry. God can still bless you the way you are. Hallelujah. You see, now they are not saying anything. Because you are the people who are pushing young people to get married. Get married. When are you going? Your age mates are going. When are you going? After another wedding, you are looking at someone and you say, you see, so and so has gone. You might be the next one. Your age mates have gone. My friend, next time they ask you that, tell them, even if your age mates have died, when are you dying? <laughs> because even your age mates are dead. So when are you dying? Leave the young ladies alone. Are we together? There's a God who knows best for them. He's an expert. Hey, in turning what? Champions. Number four. Number four. Number four. Are you with me? So what is the first point? Champions are partners. Number two. Champions are busy where they are. Number three, champions use what they have. Even David only had a sling. I mean, the Bible Adventist, David only had a sling, and God was able to magnify it. I mean, the Bible, the little boy only came with two fish or fishes and five loaves of bread, and God, Jesus, was able to multiply it. Bring your tool to Christ. And see him use it mightily. It is not your, you. It is not your tool. Which matters is you. How do you use it? Champions are never quitters. Hey. <laughs> that is number four. Elder, elder Dualo, number four. Champions are never what? Just start where you are. And don't quit. In Kisi, they say chaka. In Kijaluo, they say chaka chaka. Just begin and see what God will do. Champions are never quitters. See, this man, let me back to the text. This man was a nobody, rejected by society. And he prays, and the Bible says God was able to make him a champion. And each and every day, he could kill two or three or four. Sometimes he could come up back home bleeding, but he knew that I'm a champion. I cannot quit. That beating did not stop my aspiration from marrying. <laughs> Champions are never quitters. Are we together? Keep, connect yourself to a God who is able to make you powerful. You may be weak, but champions are never quitters. Start where you are. Use what you have. God is a God of small beginnings. Okay, let us do jobs. Job 8-7. Let us do job 8-7. Are you there? Job 8-7. What does it say? I'm looking. It is not projected there. So I can do it here. Are you there? What does it say? Though your beginning may be small, yet your latter what? Will be bigger. Even if you're only earning 10,000, use that money wisely. Hallelujah. Even if you are earning 10,000 per month, Use it wisely. God is powerful. Champions are never quitters. Zachariah 4, 10 says, Never despise humble beginnings. There are people who look at you and they wonder, will this one amount to anything? There are those who are here. They started marriage when they had nothing. But God was able to use what they had, nothing, the little that they have, to make them mighty. Champions are never quitters. So this person, each and every day, he will come. He will come and he will fight. And he will kill men. And the Bible says, God was not able to forget him. 
God was able. Champions are never quitters. The Bible says those who will make it to heaven were those who persevered till the end. So what am I saying here? There are people who will call you names. Even when you come to this church every Sabbath, they don't greet you. They have no time for you. My friend, let them talk. Let them call you names. But remember, champions are never quitters. Connect yourself to God. He will make things right. If I gave up in this life, I never stopped dreaming of anything. When I went to school, I knew God will provide. When I was studying, I knew God will provide. Hey. This life may throw dirt at your doorstep. They can consider you useless. They can consider you nothing. Remember, there's a God who values you. Hallelujah. Fine. The last point. The last point. Champions die empty. <laughs> Did you get it? Is this thing working? You didn't get the point? Champions die empty. You didn't get it? Champions do what? Now, this man died. His historians believe that he died at 80 years of age after delivering Israel. Are you getting me? Can they increase this? You're okay? He died at 80 years of age. And when he died, they wrote in his tomb, here lies Shamga, the son of Anath, a man who has died empty. <laughs> you are not getting it. So let me use another explanation. By saying this, Everyone was born rich. No one was born poor. This side is wondering, let me try this one. No one was born poor. Everyone was born what? Good. When you came from the hand of the creator, Ellen White says that God endowed Adam with a power akin to his creator. Not making sense. You may not be driving yet, but you are blessed. You may not be the richest man, you are blessed. You may not be even the, the most beautiful or handsome. Remember, you are what? All the gifts that God gave us. Let us bless the world to the extent that when we die, we will die empty. Are you getting it? Are you getting me? I'm saying that. God gave you gifts. Bless the world like Job did. The Bible says that Job was the eye to the blind and a feet to the lame. And when Job died, he says in 2918, 2019, he says that I will continue to increase even in the grave. Are we together with me? Champions die empty. There's someone in Saikeri who does not have school fee that are waiting for you to be a blessing to them. So when you die, they can say, here lies a man who has died empty. There's someone somewhere without school fee that are waiting for you to be their champion. Bless the world to the extent that when you die, you will die what? Empty. The pathfinders are going to Netherlands. They don't have money. Will you become their champion? 
Even this pastor was to go. I've decided not to go because there's no money. Will you become? <laughs> there's no money. I'm saying, my friend, bless the word like Shamga to the extent that after the battle, you can all say that here lies a man who has died empty. Number one, partner with you. Number two, be busy where you are. Number three, which number three? Use what? Number four, champions are never what? Quitters. Because if you quit, you can never win. Number four, bless the world. You see, only one thing drives me to preach. I want to bless the world with my preaching. I want to inspire generation with my preaching to the extent that when I shall die, those who will attend, they will not cry. You see, I was in Kisi recently for a funeral service and I love what the family told me. They told me, Pastor, we are not here to cry. We are not mourning. Our Father, bless the world. There were pastors, like 40 pastors. I've never attended a wedding a funeral with over 40 pastors. And all these 40 pastors were sponsored by the man who died. And so they said, Pastor, we don't need to cry. Our man here was a blessing. Even this church is the one who constructed. Hey, the orphans here. Hey, then I said, this is a great man. So when I was preaching, my preaching was easy. It is difficult to preach in a funeral. Of a person who has not died empty. <laughs> but when you have blessed the one, I just come and I say, We are not mourning. We are celebrating a life. Are we together? The man has blessed the one. We are praying. You also who is here, be like him. Die what? Will you bless the world and die empty? I want to conclude this someone here. By saying, I want to pray with you as Sidi and Shaddai are coming for a closing song. As they sing this song, and you are praying that God can make you a champion. Are you with me? Some of us are afraid to support the cause of the gospel, become a champion. Some of us are afraid of taking insurance. There are needy people here. Some are sick, they need your help. Become their champion. Hallelujah. Serious Shaddai, as they come, how many are saying that? My prayer is that God will make me a champion. Some didn't hear me. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. When the Lord make you a champion, as they they sing. I want to invite you. You are praying for your family that God may make you a champion to your wife. That God may make you a champion to your husband. That God may make you a champion of faith to the community where you come from. You are praying that God may make you a champion of faith. That God may heal your relative who is sick. That God may provide what you need if this is your desire, make a step of faith and come. After this, I'm going to pray. You want God to make you a champion to your family, a champion to the cause of the gospel, a champion to the community where you come from. Make a step of faith and come as they sing. We are going to pray. Just make a step of faith, save time. Just make a step of faith. Come after this. I want to invite my pastors here to join me. We are going to pray. For those who want God to make them champions. So if you want God to make you a champion, just come. Just come. You are sick, God will make you a champion. You are sick, God can heal your relative. May you become their champion. A prayer warrior. Someone who can pray for them. Some do not even know how to pray. Some do not even know how to read the Bible. Some do not know how to return their tithes. Some do not know how to hold the hands of the weak. 
you are praying that God can make you a champion. Make a step of faith and come. Champion. Says, they sing as they come. After this, we, the chorus says, we'll do the last song, and then we pray. Shall we, shall we pray? Shall we pray? Loving Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and praise your name for the blessings of your word. Thou, O God, who makes nobodies into somebodies, we stand here to thank you and praise your name for how you turned Shamega, a nobody, into a champion. And we are grateful that you are still in that business today. We praise your name for the many champions that you made out of us that stand here. And we praise your name for the many champions that you're going to make out of us following the hearing of this word. Behold, your children stand here, desire us and in submission that they are available for you to make them into the champions that you want them to be for the glory of your name. May your name be glorified and in our championship, we pray that honor and praise and glory will come to, um, to, unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, together with that, we want to come to you once again to praise you. Because you are the only one, Lord Jesus, who came from heaven with love. And when man sinned, you recreated him through your blood that was shed on the cross. And we thank you for the same love that you have used to take care of this church until today. And that same love you have shown us, that is why your people come to you because they know the person they are going to. They know what you can do in each and everyone's life. And Father, when we come to you, when we are heavy laden, you are there to give us rest. And you are there to recreate our hearts that are broken. And we know very well that we have come here to serve you. And there are many people who have lost their dear ones. Father, they need consolation from you. Father, we need your hand that will hold us tight so that we may not leave you. We want your power to give us strength to serve you. And we want to know you as the Lord who will come one day to give us glory that we lost in the Garden of Eden. And when we have lost hope, you are there to give us that same hope. That is why you tell us that you will make us to be some people. When this world does not know us, Father, you will know us. And you will make us to shine before the angels. Let this Sabbath be a blessed Sabbath for us all. We have come with so many things that we need from you. Father, may you be available for us so that we may find you. We want to thank you because you are a God who has created heaven for the faithfuls to rejoice in. When we will see the gold and the many things that you have used to create our home, let us rejoice and let us be amazed when we see you on the throne. Thank you for those who have come forward. You know the reason why. If we need our faith to be increased, this is the time that we need it. When our strengths have been deteriorated, by the power of the devil, we are coming because you defeated him. On the cross, when you said it is finished, let this church, New Life Church, be a church that will take people to heaven. And we want to see all of us holding hands, saying that we have seen our Savior. Let us all be bound together in your love. Yes. Because you have shown us, you have shown us the love. Yes. Thank you for the sermon that we have just heard. Let the words from the Bible bless our hearts. Yes. We thank you because you have answered, you have answered our prayers in advance. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Tell your neighbor God loves you. Thank you so much. You may be seated. God loves you.